Hello, can anyone see me? Hello? Is anyone here? <laughs> Please let me know. Okay, there we go. Hello? Okay, I think we're live now. I'm really sorry, you guys. Um, yeah, technical difficulties. I don't know what YouTube was doing. And I apologize if you saw me stressing out. <laughs> So this will be the new live stream. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't go live very often, so I'm obviously not an expert. But okay, so I hope you all find it. Let me just post. Hopefully you guys can find it. So I'm just gonna get started. I think I might have messed this up and I'm really, really sorry about that, but we're just gonna we're just gonna keep going with it. Okay. <laughs> so hey, what's up everybody? It's Gwen. So I am currently live today. I just wanted to do a natural hair QA with all of you. Um, yeah, I hope everyone can see this. If not, it's okay. Worst comes to worst, I will just make this like its own separate thing. Okay, perfect. Okay, it says I'm live. Okay. So before we get started, I wanted to make some announcements. So first announcement I wanted to make was that Target is still having their <laughs> circle week. So make sure you check out the natural hair section or just the hair section in general, you can get 20% off. Um, I personally just got two things. I got the Cantu conditioner that I love, and I also got the Raw Sugar Healing Power hair mask. So these are what I got from the Target sale, but make sure you guys check that out. And then the second announcement that I wanted to make was I did launch some things for my channel recently. I feel like I've been launching like crazy. <laughs> so I launched my merch. So you can buy So Naturally Gwen merch. That is, you can watch it under my videos and also you can check out my website, which I updated to include everything. Um, so we have that. I just wanted to remind you guys of my natural hair coaching program. So that is still up and running and we are getting clients and things like that. So that's really exciting. I'm learning more about you guys like through your hair. So I hope you guys sign up. You can check my description box on any of my videos and again on my website. I currently have a natural hair guide which is good for people that don't want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. They maybe just want to get the products and you know also they want something that's a cheaper option. So I will have that and you can get information about that like I said in my description box of any of my videos as well as my website. And then the other option is a natural hair coaching call where I work with you um, and it's one-on-one -on -one in real time coaching. So that is my second option. So once again, feel, feel free to check that out on my website as well as on the description box of any of my videos. So those are the announcements. And yes, if you're watching, be sure to put where you're watching from. And I'm also going to be taking live questions, but I also have some that were already sent in and I prepared beforehand. So let's get started. So the Okay, here we go. So the first one is, are you a straight natural? I Are you a straight natural? I thought high porosity hair is quickly prone to heat damage. How do you manage that? So 
Yes, I'm currently straight natural. I've been straightening my hair for about six months now. And yeah, this is just something that's been working well for me. So I am currently straight natural. And I manage it just like I manage any other process in my natural hair regimen. I, you know, make sure I focus on moisture and I don't neglect protein. So I try to, you know, keep protein moisture balance. And I also just use techniques to make sure I manage length retention. So that is something that I do. So those are the main things that I do to manage um, straight natural hair with my high porosity hair. I will be making videos about these topics. Um, so be on the lookout for more videos going more in depth. But for the most part, I just make sure that my hair is really moisturized. I would say that's the number one thing that I do. And yeah, so moisture is the most important thing, definitely. And then more prone to damage. I mean, I would say so just because our hair does dry out a lot quicker. I would say that heat damage is more important to be mindful of when you have high porosity hair. So that is something that I would definitely agree with. However, managing it, I just, you know, heat protectant. I make sure I don't apply too much heat too often. I only put heat on my hair once a month. And yeah, that's pretty much what I do. So. I do have some techniques, but for the most part, I would say it's not that difficult. Um, it is, it's simple, but it's not difficult. Um, yeah, so there are some things that you probably would have to, you know, manage actively, but I think there are some things that, you know, can be managed. Like it's manageable, but I'm not gonna say it's super easy. All right. And um, be sure to like this live stream if you're just joining. I see some more people are joining and feel free to comment where you are watching from if you'd like. Happy you guys can make it today. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I had to start a new live stream. So <laughs> we only got into the first question and feel free to watch the replay if you missed anything. Okay, and then to get some more questions from... Okay, here we go. Okay, the next question is okay the next question is if you have low porosity hair how can you keep your hair from drying out so fast i'm sorry i got distracted easily oh someone's watching from kentucky that's awesome welcome nice seeing you today <laughs> i've never been to kentucky but i've been to tennessee and i think those are close by so <laughs> okay Going back to the question, if you have high low porosity hair, how can you keep your hair from drying out so fast? So I, d I am high porosity, I'm not low porosity, and I've only really made one video about low porosity hair on my channel. So that is something that I question if I should make more content about. But yes, so if you have low porosity hair, I would definitely say take advantage of the times that your hair cuticle is open. So that would be, you know, when you're during wash day as well as when you are re-moisturizing your hair. So definitely in the shower, I would focus on making sure you get your moisture into your hair if that is what you're concerned about. And also, I know protein is something that low porosity hair likes to avoid or is recommended to avoid. However, I still think that protein is important depending on how damaged your hair is. So you can use a light protein treatment, which would be just a deep conditioner that has small bits of protein in them. And I would still focus on moisture nonetheless. But yes, your cuticle is open during that time. Um, another thing is to apply your leave-in conditioners right in the shower. Like, so once your hair is, you know, wrung out and you've rinsed out all your conditioners and things, you can just, you know, go right in with your leave-in conditioner right in the shower. So that is something that I recommend for low porosity hair. And then another thing is just to re-moisturize your hair whenever you need to. I feel like um, I myself would also judge how often I needed to re-moisturize my hair because you know it can point to do I need to change something but it also could just be your hair. So I would just say give your hair what it needs. Um, for low porosity hair specifically I would recommend um, if I had low porosity hair what I would do is I would take my hair I would spritz it with some water I would kind of like make like a, a bun or like a bantu knot and then I would put a shower cap on my hair and you know let it sit so that the water can absorb and then one by one I would probably take each section out you know get rid of the shed hair 
and re-moisturize and twist it back up. So that's personally what I would do if I had low porosity hair. I would just kind of, you know, make sure my cuticles open and then go section by section, making sure that my hair doesn't dry out in the process. Okay, and then the next question is, how long have you been doing YouTube and what inspired you? So I've been on YouTube since 2016. I made an account in 2010, like I discovered YouTube for myself in 2010, but I made my first video in 2016. Um, what inspired me? So many people, you know, I was a lover of YouTube when I started posting videos. I've been watching, you know, for six years. Um, I would say specific YouTubers probably inspired me. Um, I loved Michelle Phan, um, Dulce Candy 87, Heather123, Pixie Woo, like some of the old school YouTubers definitely inspired me. Oh, Juicy Star 07, I loved her videos. Um, All That Glitter is 21, I think. And I also like Jackie Ina as well. Um, she was Little Miss Pumpkin Pie. I loved her videos too. So there were certain YouTubers that inspired me, but I would get questions about how I do my hair. And so, yeah, I remember one of my friends at church, she said, oh, could you make a video and like send it to me how you do your hair? And mind you, this was when I was straining my hair, so I wasn't even natural at that point, but um, I don't think I ended up doing the video, but <laughs> that stuck with me, you know, to make videos to show people how you do things. And um, when I graduated college in 2016, I had just gone natural. Um, I, you know, moved back home. I, not gonna lie, I was bored. Um, I just got another relationship, so I was, you know, I had extra time on my hands, a new job and things like that, so... I just, yeah, wanted to try it and I didn't have very good equipment. I really didn't have any equipment and I was doing research about what you should do to start a YouTube channel and really it's just to start. Um, I posted on my phone. Um, I watched Te Amo Erin. I think she still posts here on YouTube and she was like, I take my phone to a window and that's how I film because I don't have a tripod and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna do it. So yeah, I did that and yeah, I just posted um, I also didn't really tell anybody about my channel. I just posted just to see if I liked it and, you know, wanted to create the habit of being on YouTube. So that's what really inspired me. Um, I've always just been a bit of a, um, I don't know. I've always liked beauty, fashion, hair. Like that's just something I've always really been into. Um, so that was something that I wanted to talk about, I guess. Um, it was nice to share my interests. And so yeah, that's what inspired me. And I also really like technology. Um, like I liked learning how to, you know, edit and things like that. And I realized, you know, I could easily learn it because there's so many tutorials online. So yes, that is what inspired me. And that's how long I've been on YouTube. And then the next question is, do you like to draw? You're amazing at makeup. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I do like to draw. Um, I don't draw as much anymore. I would say my creative hobby is, you know, more YouTube. I do coloring books sometimes just because it's relaxing, but um, it's a lot of strain on my shoulder. Um, I've had a lot of um, shoulder arm things going on recently because of um, I type a lot at my job. So that has gotten in the way of some of my creative hobbies, but I do draw um, more so when I was younger though. Next question is, I think I've already answered this question. So I'm gonna skip this next one. Okay, next question is, how did you learn to take care of your hair? So I just, yeah, that's a loaded question, but I, I understand the question. Um, you know, how do you master your hair, right? So, it just really takes time like I feel that there's a lot of frustration when you're trying to learn how to do your hair and you don't know much about your hair and you're trying to find tips and you're trying to find anything that can help you I would say that you know just listening quote unquote listening to your hair um, what I mean by that is responding to it so if I notice that a technique or a product that I tried from someone else works for me I keep it if it's a trick that someone tries to show and it doesn't work for me, then I trash it. You know what I mean? Like, 
yeah, I think it's just a process, um, but it is important to learn from other people. I do think so. Natural85 on YouTube, she was really helpful for me when I started my YouTube, um, like my natural hair journey. She was very helpful. And so she has really good videos. I'm going to give her credit um, on how to wash your hair, co-washing. Um, th that was really how I started to like master my hair, but I don't think so. Um, I think, you know, over time I learned different things about my hair and you do research, there's a ton of articles online. It takes legwork, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, but you know, if my mom's always taught me if others have done it, you can do it too. And we're, we're in the age of information where there's so much information, maybe too much information online. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel like it's, again, like I said, simple, but it's not easy. It can be easy because we have so many resources on the internet and around us, you can ask other people. But yeah, that is what I did to take care of my hair. I just kind of took the tips that helped me and kept it and learned my hair and just, you know, give yourself grace because it's gonna take, it might take some time to learn how to do your hair. But um, yeah, so that is the next question. Let's move on. Oh, thank you for the like. I saw the heart. <laughs> um, next question is... Oh, sorry. Okay, next is, how many times is one supposed to deep condition the hair? So I feel like the question is pointing to, because there have been some videos where I've mentioned you know that you should you should um deep condition your hair multiple times and i would say maximum twice um just because i do a protein treatment then a moisture treatment usually so i would say that would be the amount of times that you're supposed to to, con to condition your hair but i understand the question Next question is, so with low porosity hair, is it recommended to rinse with cold water? So I definitely think that you should rinse your hair with cold water when it comes to low porosity hair. However, I don't think you should rinse your hair with low, with rinse your hair with cold water right away. I feel like, especially if you are going to be applying products to your hair afterwards, I would, recommend using warm water put your products in your hair when your hair is still wet honestly like towel it a little bit and then put product in your hair and then you can use cold water if you want but no I, I think warm water personally however if you are going to rinse your hair with cold water and then fast forward when your hair is a little bit drier open your cuticle back up and then apply product then you could use cold water um but i think in the video that the person mentioned I think I was mainly thinking for like high porosity hair. Okay, congratulations on graduating and sharing your hair knowledge. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this question. What would be a great serum to use for nourishing the scalp and hair growth? So I recommend, shameless plug, um, I recommend my So Naturally Scalp Oil for your scalp. Um, it does have rosemary oil in it, so it does promote hair growth. And then for that reason, I also recommend the Miel Rosemary Mint Oil, like the one that's viral right now. It's in my bathroom, so I don't have it right now. But I used it on my hair yesterday, and it's really, <laughs> it really saved my hair because it's been dry. So I like that one as well. Uh, I don't really put the Miel one on my scalp, though, because it's a bit heavy. But I would say just a lighter oil on your scalp. Um, a serum though, I've never used serums specifically, but I have used oils on my scalp. So I personally oil my scalp, I don't use serums. Okay. Next question is, is low porosity hair usually thin? So usually high porosity hair is thin, but I wouldn't put like I wouldn't categorize people. Like I wouldn't put people in a box, you know? So I'm sure there are people with high porosity hair that have thick hair and vice versa. Like there's low porosity naturals that have 
thin hair. So um, usually it's been it's been said that high porosity hair is thin, but I'm sure low porosity hair can be thin as well. next question is what do you think of clarifying shampoo do you think they're too strong so yes <laughs> I definitely do think clarifying shampoos are very strong and I avoid them I personally advocate for moisturizing shampoos for sure like if I try a shampoo and it makes my hair too dry no it's not for me so yeah <laughs> I definitely don't like clarifying shampoos personally I just I think the benefit of cleaning your scalp, it's just not worth it to make my hair super dry. Now you can use a clarif- I'm so sorry if you hear thumping upstairs. Sorry, people live above me, I guess. There's never been anyone above me, but now today for some reason they wanna stomp around. So I'm sorry if you hear that, but um, going back to what I was saying, yeah, I just don't think that the you know benefit of cleaning your scalp with a clarifying shampoo is worth it because your hair is going to dry out now i don't shampoo my hair all the time and you could say okay well if i use a clarifying shampoo like every once in a while is that okay and definitely you know i feel like you can use a clarifying shampoo i just find that when i use very drying products i'm having to chase behind that process and like re-moisturize my hair so i personally like to just use a moisturizing shampoo and i'll shampoo my hair twice so that's personally what i like to do and it's it's perfectly good to clean my hair like I haven't noticed any difference in the cleansing ability with a clarifying versus a moisturizing shampoo Okay. Next question is, have you ever experienced moisture overload in your hair? If so, how long did it take to bounce back and what helped? So, yes, I have. Um, I don't think I've made a dedicated video about my experience with moisture overload, but I have talked about that happening in my protein moisture balance videos that I have on my channel. So I have experienced moisture overload, I would say a couple times, but um the first time it ever happened I wasn't really understanding what was going on and I didn't realize it and then because I wasn't using as much protein I ended up going into moisture, moisture overload which was the main reason so I was kind of you know on this protein free or protein sensitive kind of kick and I was really only using moisture and not that much protein and my hair definitely went into moisture overload I would say it took about Sorry, I'm very distracted by noise, so it's a lot of thumping. Um, yeah, so I would say it took me about two to three weeks, definitely by a month. I think my hair felt better um, because you do have to clarify your hair and you have to, you know, add the protein back in. But what I will say is that it took less time to recover from moisture overload than protein overload. Protein overload took more time for me to recover from, but I would say moisture overload does still take some time, just not as much. And then what helped was just adding protein. So then I focused mainly on sealing in that moisture so that my hair would still retain the moisture and I used protein treatments. My question is, what do you do if you have a hairstyle and you use gel the day before, but you want to refresh your hair, but don't want to put more product in it? So yeah, I feel like the slick back hairstyles, really the only way to refresh those hairstyles is to do a deep conditioner. So when I was slicking my hair, I would just rinse my hair, apply deep conditioner, rinse it out and do my hair again there's it's really difficult having a slicked down hairstyle and then adding more gel on top of it 
I do not recommend adding more gel to it. It just adds a, you know, a lot of buildup onto your scalp and on your hair. So yeah, at that point, I would just rinse your hair, put on a moisturizing deep conditioner, rinse it out and just, you know, re-slick your hair down. That's what I personally recommend. I struggle with shedding when cleansing. Any tips on how often to cleanse and what types of products? So shedding, yeah, I shed too. Um, so I've noticed that I shed less hair when I don't do very tight hairstyles. So when I would do like slick buns and things like that, I would get the worst shedding in comparison to a regular wash day. So that is something I would, you know, be mindful of when I use, you know, these tight hairstyles. That is when I would have the most shedding. So how often to cleanse? Yeah, I say how often you really need. So when my hair was in a curly state, I usually wash my hair once a week. And then as a straight natural, I wash my hair once a month. And then the types of products, you can watch any of my favorites videos, but I really recommend a moisturizing shampoo. And yeah, those are the types of products that I recommend. Okay. How often do you safely straighten your hair since it's high porosity and you have fine hair? So I usually just straighten my hair when I wash my hair. Um, so once a month. And then the other day I did have to, sorry about the thumping. Um, the other day I did have to straighten this part of my hair. So my whole head, I would say once a month and then touch ups here and there. I really only really try to touch my hair up like once. Like, I don't know if you guys can see like there's kind of a like a, a dent right here i could flatten that but i don't want to because you know the extra heat so yeah one to two times a month i try not to um you know straighten my hair too too much okay what are your what are some of your favorite protein free deep conditioners i've been looking for a protein free highly moisturizing deep conditioner so my favorite moisturizing deep conditioner like protein free i would have to say would be the camille rose algae renew deep conditioner that is my favorite protein free deep conditioner i don't buy it very often um i should treat myself like i'm trying to get into this habit of you know using up my products and then treating myself to something nice so that is something i want to do um yeah that is something that is that is a product that sticks out to me for a protein-free deep conditioner. I also like the Miel Overnight Deep Conditioner. That's a really good one. And yeah, I think those are my two favorites. Okay. How do you get your silk press to last a month? What temperature was the flat iron and did you put heat protectant on wet hair yeah okay no I don't do that I don't put the heat protectant on wet hair um, and to make it last a month I just make sure that the day of wash day I get a really good you know treatment protein treatment I make sure it has moisture and that really helps to make my hair last a month um, also you know re-moisturizing my hair so I'm going to be doing videos about how I do re-moisturize my straight natural hair. So I will be doing that soon. And the temperature that I use is 410 degrees. My flat iron goes up to that temperature. So it's basically the highest temperatures that I use. And no, I don't put heat protectant on my wet hair. I use it on my dry hair. Um, I mean, for blow drying, I guess my hair is wet, but it's not, you know, soaking wet. It's like damp. So yeah, after I dry my hair and my hair isn't fully 100% dry, I will use heat protectant, but yeah, not for flat ironing, for blow drying. Okay, could you recommend a protein treatment for high porosity hair? Um, yeah, you can use any of the um, strengthening deep conditioners that I've mentioned on my channel, but 
I would say my favorite one would be the ORS hair mayonnaise. I really enjoy that one. And that would be my number one protein treatment that I would recommend. When you mention when you mention cream for the LOC method, would you say that butter cream is the same category as cream in LOC, such as I, as I am double butter cream? Yes. So when I talk about the lock method or the LCO method, whichever one I mentioned, that's another thing I for a brief period of time was using the LOC method, and then I swiftly went back to the LCO method. Yeah. Anyway, any of the you know, methods I've mentioned for moisturizing your hair, I would say that creams are, you know, kind of in the C, um, the C category. So unless it's an oil such as like shea butter, like 100% shea butter, um, if it's like olive oil, anything like that, those are in the O's, but hair creams, hair lotions, those would be the C. So like liquid cream oil or leave-in conditioner cream oil, that um, I would put buttercreams in the, the C category. Okay. okay, next question is, do you have any videos on being high porosity but accidentally using too much protein? My hair loves protein, but I do wanna keep protein moisture balanced. Yes, I do. If you watch my protein-free wash day routine, um, I think it's my most popular video on my channel. That one, I think I was kind of, you know, in the last stages of recovering from my protein overload. So that is one video that I have where I talk about protein overload. And I've mentioned here and there in all my other protein moisture balance videos that I, you know, have had the instance of stepping into moisture and protein overload. And hello to all the people that are bouncing in and out. Feel free to leave a like and also tell me where you're watching from if you haven't commented that yet. Oops. Okay. Next question. Do you co-wash with regular conditioner or co-wash, rinse it, what? Sorry. Do you co-wash with regular conditioner or co-wash Wash it out and then deep condition with a separate deep conditioner. Yes. Yes. I think, yeah. Yeah. So I think what they're trying to ask is would you use two separate conditioners for co washing and the deep conditioning? And yes, I would. So, as an example, oh, we can use these products right here perfectly. Perfect. Um, so, I have used this to co wash my hair, the Cantu. Um, Cantu conditioner. So I have used this to co-wash my hair, rinse it out, and then would use a mask. So yes, I would totally recommend. I know some people have put in like rinse out conditioners and then just left it in, you know, you can do that as well. But I personally use two separate conditioners, but you can leave a rinse out conditioner in your hair. Oh, someone's watching from Liverpool. Oh, cool. I'm not going to lie, Liverpool? I'm I'm not gonna lie, I don't know where that is. That looks like a, is that from the UK? That looks like a UK flag to me. So I'm thinking somewhere in Europe, but hello. Thanks for watching, hope you're enjoying the video. <laughs> I wanna travel more, so I'm definitely gonna be researching all these countries that you guys are watching from. <laughs> okay. Next video, next question. Do you deep condition your hair twice a month if you have high porosity hair? So, I mean, I totally would. Um, like I mentioned in the other question about the gel hairstyle, if it was an instance where, you know, I needed to refresh my hair, I would definitely deep condition um, twice a month. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, because I, I, I recommend washing your hair once a week. So, yes, I would say... Four times a month actually yeah sorry yeah four times a month but i mean if someone only washed their hair once a month for example and they wanted to deep condition again in the middle i think that's totally perfectly fine yeah i would do that okay 
for your apple cider vinegar rinse, how many time, how many minutes does it stay in the hair? How many minutes does the vinegar need to stay in your hair? I'm paraphrasing this. How many minutes does the apple cider vinegar need to stay in your hair and then you rinse it out? So for my apple cider vinegar rinse, I just literally squeeze through my hair and rinse it right out. I don't let it sit at all. Um, so yeah, I don't let it sit in my hair at all. Is argan oil shampoo better or sorry muru muru is argan oil shampoo better or muru muru butter shampoo for low porosity hair i don't know what that is um yeah i'll have to do research on what those are if anyone knows what those are please let me know but um my thought would be i'm not sure if this is like a natural shampoo like a diy shampoo but um I would just whatever conditioner you're looking at i would say just look at the ingredients and go from there um i actually i want to do a video talking about ingredients and how to read ingredients i don't know if i want to do just a general video about how to read the ingredients list of a product or if i want to do some type of um where i read through ingredients with you guys i'm not really sure how i want to do that so yes, I do want to do more ingredient based videos, but I don't really know how to go about it. So yeah, I apologize. I do not know what muru muru or boy, mu what muru muru butter is, but yeah, um, I would say just look at the rest of the ingredients and if they meet your criteria, then use it. Yeah. Sorry for the noise. I don't know what's going on up there. Okay. What would be the best moisture balance shampoo for high porosity hair? Hmm. Um, I don't know if they mean protein moisture balanced. I have not found a protein moisture balance shampoo yet. Um, I usually only find ones that have protein and moisture so i can't speak on that but for a moisturizing shampoo my favorite one hmm, i don't know i have a couple ones that i like but um i'll just go with the tgin sulfate free shampoo i love that um shampoo i would say it's my favorite Do you do anything about knots? My hair not so easily. Yeah, so for knots, I would say the best thing to do is just make sure your hair doesn't get too tangled. So I like to keep my hair in a detangled state as much as possible. So when I, my hair is in a curly state, I try to use like chunky twists. I don't really, you know, fully detangle my hair. I will have my twists and I would usually keep them pretty like rabbled on it's on each other so when I would take out my twist out I would not separate my hair too too much and that helps with knots another thing would be protective styling so I usually would do flat twists and put it in a bun so that would really help with knots um yeah just anywhere any way that your ends can be protected it helps to not form knots even when my hair is straight natural I try to make sure that I don't get knots. Um, I do also have to keep my hair kind of organized. So I think two nights ago, I didn't wear a scarf to bed. I just, um, I think I laid my scarf out on my bed and I just went to bed. Um, and I did get some knots in the hairs like underneath here and I had to like cut out the knot. So yeah, just making sure that you keep your hair kind of organized out of the way um, and your ends not free is the best way to avoid knots. I'm high porosity and I'm asking if it's okay to apply deep conditioner and rinse and then follow with a conditioner because when I only apply deep conditioner my hair gets frizzy yeah sure I, you know I feel like there's a lot of 
steps in other people's wash day routines that I don't do. So if there's something else that you feel like you need to do for your hair, then I say do it. Like, I don't think there's any wrong way to do your hair if it works for you and you like the results. Okay. When do you apply oil to your hair as your, when do you apply oil to your hair as in your wash day routine? I'm a beginner in going natural. So I do know that some people apply oil to their hair while they're shampooing their hair and also they'll seal their deep conditioner in with an oil. I don't do that. I do a pre-poo. So I'll do a hot oil treatment before I shampoo my hair. So that's really the only time during my wash day routine that I apply oil to my hair personally. But like I said, there's so many different ways to do it. So totally can, you know, feel free to edit my steps and add on what you need. <laughs> Can high porosity hair easily get protein overload? Yeah. Honestly, I feel like I've now heard that high porosity hair is easily protein overloaded and then low porosity hair also says it's easily protein overloaded. I feel like all hair can easily get protein overload because when the moisture runs out, you're kind of left with protein. Like think of a balance, the moisture's leaving. So you're by default protein overloaded, you know what I mean? And then if you're not mindful of adding moisture back into your hair and you're focusing on protein, then your hair can get even more protein overloaded. So um, yeah, I, I, I would say both, but I feel like because high porosity hair is recommended to focus so much on protein, I do think that high porosity hair probably could get more protein overloaded just because, you know, our hair dries out very easily and then we're always told to use protein. So I think for that reason, I would say yes, high porosity hair is um, likely to get protein overloaded. Be sure to like this um, live stream so that um, more people find it and it'll let me know that you guys like live streams and then I'll do more of them. Okay. Do you use apple cider vinegar diluted for each wash day? I'm considering using it and incorporating co-washing back into my routine. That's awesome. So yes, I use apple cider vinegar every single wash day, every single wash day um, because you know, like I've mentioned in some of my short form content recently, I have been um, posting like little bits to just like, you know, give you guys some natural hair reminders. And yeah, high porosity hair, the cuticle doesn't close very easily. So I use apple cider vinegar every single wash day to make sure I close my hair cuticle. It's uh, an important step for my wash day routine. So yeah, every wash day. Even if I just happen to do a deep conditioner midweek, I will seal my hair cuticle again. So every time I do a treatment on my hair and I'm done wash day, I will close my hair cuticle properly. Oh, oh I think that's it. <laughs> I think I don't have any more questions, you guys. Um, but yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> so we have been streaming for 45 minutes almost. So I'm going to see if anyone has any last minute questions and um, let me know where you're watching from last minute. And yeah, I have nothing else to say. Um, I really hope you guys are enjoying your Saturday. I'm glad it wasn't raining because I thought the rain would be very loud. So I'm glad that you guys couldn't hear any of that. Um, but yeah. Be, feel free to like this video. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed the live stream. I hope that this was helpful. And yeah, I hope to be doing more of these live streams in the future. Sorry for the technical difficulties at the beginning as well. Feel free to check out the replay once this uploads. And yeah, if that's all you guys want to talk about, then that's it. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and glad to see all of you here. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.